Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at rendering PaintFX grass. Now, last week I did PaintFX trees um, and that method would work for grass as well. However, um, I was put onto a slightly different method by uh, Julian Duval on YouTube. I'm going to link to his uh, RenderMan community page in the description. Make sure you go there and send him your thanks for this method. Um, this method is particularly good for paint effects geometry that only has one shader. So in this example, I'm using grass. For trees, it doesn't seem to be as good because the tree has two different textures in it. And you'll understand why um, that wouldn't work so great once we get into it. So why don't we get into it? Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a polygon plane. And I'm just going to make it big. And then I'm going to go in the channel box editor and go to the poly plane and change it to be 20 by 20. Um, and I'm going to turn the grid off and I'll also turn on wireframe on shaded. So um, we're going to make some hills very easily. So I'm going to right click and select vertex and uh, we're going to select area. Um, so we'll soft select. So if you hit B, you'll see the soft select comes up. If you hold down B and left click and drag, you'll be able to uh, enlarge and or uh, reduce your selection area. So I'm just going to select a couple uh, a vertex and make it bigger and then select another vertex and maybe make a smaller sort of hill there and then maybe uh, a little one there and all right so we have some geometry now. Now we're going to play, apply our paint effects to that. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to if you're in modeling go to generate and select template brush settings. You get this window here. We want to make sure for this method we've got the brush type set to paint, otherwise this won't work correctly. This is really important. Next we can go to Windows, General Editors and go to Visor. And once again we're in the Paint Effects tab. We'll scroll down to Grasses and we're going to use the Grass Wind Wide. So select that, make sure that the brush type is set to paint and then you'll see that you've got your paint effects tool. Uh, actually, one other thing, select your mesh that you want to draw on and go to generate and uh, make paintable. That way we'll actually be able to paint on the mesh. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just grab our grass and uh, again, you can enlarge and or reduce the size of this brush by holding down B. And we'll just draw some grass out. All right, so we've got some grass. It looks somewhat unexciting at the moment, but that's fine. And also you notice there's a bunch of big gaps. And we'll uh, fix that in a moment. We need to make this so it renders in render man first, because at the moment it will not render. And I'll just chuck a light in. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is select our grass. I'll actually put this on a separate layer. So I don't keep selecting it. Select our grass. Um, we'll go to Windows and Node Editor. And I'm just going to do it this way because it makes it quite clear. We'll route the grass so we can see all the um, things that are plugged into it. And then we'll go to the Attribute Editor for the grass. We'll go to the Stroke, not the um, not the Shape node. We want the, the Transform node. Uh, we'll go to Attributes, Render Man, Add Custom Shading Group. And then you'll see you get this Custom Shading Group here. Uh, we'll quickly remap that grass. So now you'll see that if I expand that by hitting three, you'll see it's got the custom shading group plugged into that. Now we don't want the initial shading group because that's just a uh, blend, I think, from memory. So we want to use a render man shader. So let's go up to the hypershade editor and create one by typing in Pixar surface. Click that. And you'll see that we've got one in our scene, uh, but we want to bring this into the node editor so we can hook it up there. So what we'll do is we'll select the uh, shading group node, holding down the middle mouse button and drag it into the node editor. And then you'll see we've got this Pixar surface shading group. And what we want to do is expand it out by hitting three on the keyboard with the, the node selected and plug the message into the um, uh, custom render man shading group. Now uh, we're not quite finished there. 
for this to render correctly. So it gets the colors. We need to use a prim variable um, node. So we'll type it, we'll hit tab and type in Pixar prim. We'll get a prim var, hit three, expand it out, and we'll run the result RGB into the diffuse color. Next, we need to go up to the variable name. We're gonna type in C for color, and S is gonna be the S texture, uh, 2D texture, which we're which is grabbing it from the um, from the grass. Um, if it doesn't have a texture, then obviously it won't have one. I don't think the grass actually uses a texture. I think it's just using color, uh, but it doesn't make a difference whether or not you put it in. Uh, next variable name, we need to turn to color because obviously this is the color. And then finally, we'll go back to our uh, Pixar surface, go to advanced under the diffuse channel and make sure that double sided is enabled. Um, if you are using transmissions, you might want to transmit the same color that you're using for your diffuse channel. It might get a bit washed out if you just use a straight white, though theoretically that would be more physically correct. Um, for this example, I will actually transmit the primitive, uh, the color that's being sent from Paint FX, so I'll do that by selecting the Pixar surface node, typing in trans and we'll get diffuse transmit gain run the result RGB into the, sorry, uh, transmit color, run the result RGB into the transmit color. And then you can increase the gain as necessary. I won't increase it just yet. Um, first, we'll have a look at it in the render. So with that all set up, we should be good to go. So we'll run an IPR. All right, so without converting that to a polygon mesh, you can see that we've got our color and we've got our uh, mesh being rendered in scene, which is great. So this is a, a lot better than um, converting it to a polygon mesh because you still have all of the procedural control that you get from PaintFX. And what this means is, so in this render at the moment, you can see there's just strips of grass. And if you want to affect, uh, change that, you can select your grass now and go to the grass uh, wide node. And then we can change our brush profile uh, to be wider. So maybe four. And also we can also change our um, global scale if you want it to be larger or smaller. Uh, you can go back uh, to the um, transform node and you can change the display quality. So it's a little bit lighter on your system when you're working in the display port. Also, you could put this on a separate layer and hide it if you wanted to. Um, so even with the display quality down, if I now render, it will still render up all the grass. And we can thicken that grass even more if we want the sample density to go up, say, to five. Um, run that IPR again. Now there's a whole lot more geometry in the scene, so obviously this is going to start taking a toll on your CPU and on your renders. Um, but you know, you, because it's if you've got the if you've got the display quality down, then it's not going to be a big deal in Maya itself. It's only going to be a big deal at render time. Uh, finally, there's a few more things that you can affect. So one of the things is the color. So you'll have the shading uh, lobe here that you can drop down. Basically, the color one and color two is um, your root to tip. So this is the tip and this is the root. It seems counterintuitive because they're upside down, but that's fine. So let's um, we can make them crazy colors. We could randomize the hue. So if I randomize the hue a lot, you'll notice that the colors start to vary quite a bit and generally you're not going to be doing something like this but if you've got a nice green say for example that's sort of more of a grassy green in my opinion and we just turn the hue randomization up a little bit and you can also change the value randomization so some pieces of grass will look a little bit um, more dead uh, or dry um, the root fade if you want to increase it uh, where it fades into the root this is all stuff for probably a separate tutorial um, but if you render that up now, you'll see with very little effort, you get some fairly convincing grass and uh, a bit of variation in the color, probably a little bit too much at the moment, but, um, with some proper lighting, you could get something that looks quite good. Also, the other thing that's good about this compared to something like XGen is it's very easy to set up collisions. So if we jump, uh, we can chuck in a polygon sphere, for example, let's move that up. Uh, make it bigger. All right, we'll select the grass and then we'll select the sphere and we're going to generate and we'll use make collide and then, whoops, and then if I select the sphere and push it into the grass, 
you'll see it's pushing the grass out of the way. Now this gets pretty um, CPU heavy because there is a, a, a fair bit of geometry in the scene and uh, usually collision geometry you want to keep to be fairly low poly. Um, usually you cheat it by using a low poly invisible, invisible mesh over your high poly mesh uh, depending on what you're working with. But um, you know you can see there that that's quite good. And then I'll just leave that in the scene. Um, and because I'm only seeing a little bit of the grass there, you're not getting the quite the whole effect. But if I render that up, you'll see that you're getting a nice ball uh, pushing the grass away. Now you'll probably want to further go into the grass to create things like uh, specularity, which is obviously just in your Pixar surface node. You probably go into your primary specular, um, add a little bit of specularity. Uh, maybe a little bit of roughness um, and just adjust it as you see fit but that's pretty much all there is to it really I don't really need to go much further than that without getting into a whole uh, separate tutorial on how to use paint effects and it, I will be the first to admit I'm no master of paint effects um, it's not really something I've spent a whole lot of time with but um, from time to time it does come in handy um, probably the thing that I've used most actually is creating grass but I've previously um, converted it to polygon so now this method has been a real boon for me so once again thank you to Julian Duval on YouTube um, check out his stuff on the community site, uh, Pixar's community site. He's got some custom shaders and an IES profile there, I believe, which is worth checking out as well. And that link is in the description once again. So cheers, Julian. Um, and that's it for this tutorial. So I hope you liked it. Make sure you click the like button if you did so other people on YouTube can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I'm putting a couple of tutorials up every week for CG products like RenderMan and Maya, etc. If you want to stay further up to date, make sure you're following on the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.